For our first session today, let's welcome Julian Mariño, Director of the Evaluation Center of the School of Education at Universidad de Los Andes, Yadira Gómez, Project Manager of the Edu Evaluation Center of the School of Education at Universidad de Los Andes, and Adriana Molina, she is the Rector of the San Patricio School. So, um... Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello, Talia. How are you? Hi. Very well. So I'm Thank going you. to. You're welcome. The stage is. So I should start. Yes, Talia. We're ready. Yes, now you can start. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for being here on a Saturday morning. We're very happy to be at this conference. Well, today we're going to talk to you a little bit about uh, a project on where we developed a classroom observation instrument uh, and some of the lessons we, we had in this, in this project. I'll be talking about first about some of the context where we developed the project and its objectives the general structure of the instrument that we developed, how we trained their observers and of the application. Then I'm going to, to give the stage to Julian, who will talk to you about the results we obtained. So this was a project that we developed in the year 2019 uh, nationwide in Colombia, and it lasted for five months. The main objectives of our pro project were to design an English classroom observation instrument, which would allow us to produce valid measures on the strengths and weaknesses of teaching practices and also to produce comparative measures of a sample of English classes from groups of teachers which were participating in different training programs which were being offered by the uh, British Council. So first we developed uh, an assessment framework. This framework was based uh, on the Teaching for Success framework uh, and it was complemented by a, a, a teacher a evaluation framework which we developed in Los Andes. And so our framework had basically four domains, planning and preparation, teaching and learning dynamics, learning environment, and monitoring and evaluation. Each of these domains was then decomposed into several components. The first one, planning lessons and courses. The second one, managing resources. In teaching and learning dynamics, we had knowing the subject, which was basically uh, pedagogical content knowledge and English proficiency of the teachers, understanding learners and promoting 21st century skills. Then in the third domain, which was learning environment, we had classroom management, which relates to uh, managing classroom procedures, managing classroom behavior, uh, but also on teacher-student relationships and student-student relationships and on fostering self-reliance in, in this learning environment. Our fourth domain was monitoring and evaluation and there we, we observed three uh, two components uh, which were assessing learning, how teachers, what type of, of assessing were uh, seen in the classes, but also how teachers monitored learning and provided feedback to students. Um, so with this framework, we, we developed a tool which had a general structure, which, which was we had uh, questions which were to be answered by the observer before the classes, basically related to the context where the class was, was uh, seen, but also uh, related to the lesson plan which was provided by the teacher to the observer. Then we would have... Uh, different activities that would happen along the classes. So there would be questions that would be answered as many times as activities we had. We had three activities. We had questions that would be answered in each activity. Uh, we would then have a, a questions at the end of the, of the class, uh, how, the, how the teacher wrapped up the class, uh, if, he, if she, he or she went uh, over, if the class objectives were obtained, etc. And then, we had snapshots where we collected every four minutes um, 
what the teacher was doing and what the students were doing. This amounted to a total of 77 items. Uh, regarding the structure, I would only add that at the end we realized that it was not very useful to have uh, this separation by activities, basically because in, I would say, 98% of the classes that we observed, we would only have one activity. And even in those that we have two or even three activities, the way the teachers and students behaved uh, was not was not differentiated differentiated by activities. So we would not this did not add up uh, additional information to the results. So we had seventy seven items as I mentioned before. But then um, we went into the teacher tra the observer training. As it's I, I I would guess obvious in an evaluation of this kind, we we are trying to have observations be as objective as possible, meaning that they do not, the results of the observation does not depend uh, on the observer, so that regardless of who the observer is, we get the same results. So this uh, points to, to the central uh, importance of rigorously training the observers. So we trained 20, uh, 19 observers, which were professionals with pedagogical experience and, and proficiency, high proficiency in English, basically English teachers, uh, who were to review the lesson plans which were sent by the teachers and then would have to observe and codify classroom sessions. In order to, to have these training sessions, uh, we first developed uh, different materials. Obviously, first the, the tool that I mentioned before, but also a glossary which explained in great detail what, what we meant by each word. Uh, this is not a, a minor thing because there are enormous interpretation or misinterpretations of everything. And so, so um, we developed a, a very detailed glossary that, that helped us reach agreements on what we meant by everything we were uh, putting in the items. The second uh, material we developed was that we recorded English classes and then uh, coded these English classes. So we would have, I'm going to say, um, correct answers, which the, the, the observers during the training tried to reach. And then uh, we, we, we had an application, an app, which was in, put in a tablet, like in an, in an iPad, so that the observers would then code the classes directly uh, in the iPad. This allowed us to have on real, the results in real time, not, not lose any time, not only during the training, but also during the application. The results would come out very, very fast and that saved the same time for processing. So we had a five-day workshop, uh, which was initially planned as a, a two-day workshop. Then we saw that we needed three, then we added up to five-day workshop. In future opportunities, I would say that we would need at least five days uh, to start this, this type of training in order to reach the levels of agreement that we needed. Um, so during the, the training, we would uh, train the, teach the, the observers to use the tablet, then review the evaluation criteria with both theoretical and practical exercises, uh, we, we, which were, were done with the, the videos that we had pre-recorded and pre-coded. Uh, and then we would go into discussions to reach agreement. After these sessions, the observers, particularly those that uh, struggled more with reaching agreement with the others, uh, did new recordings at home. So um, along these five days, we, we tracked three indicators which would show us how far we were from obtaining these uh, agreements. First, the percentage of correct answers per observers, third, second, the percentage of correct answers per question, and last, the average distance of each applicator with the reference qualification, which is what I've said before, our, our pre-coded videos. Then we would discuss each, each of these, of these uh, indicators and try to reach a higher level of agreements. Now, after this, we like after three months of the project, we went to the uh, two months of the project. We went into, into the application. This application had three objectives: was was to, to collect data in order to produce comparative measures 
from a sample of English classes from teachers which were participating in the British Council training programs, calibrate the reliability of class observation measures, and calibrate the reliability of teacher measures. So from a universe of 1,128 schools and 2,550 teachers, uh, from that universe, we, we had a two-stage sampling process. The first stage was schools. So from, from this uh, 1,128 schools, we selected 350 schools and were able to observe 286. Then from this 2,550 teachers, we selected 700 and were able to observe 515. We had an additional sample of 60 teachers, which had two observers of the same class and an additional sample uh, of 150 teacher, teachers, uh, which we ended up watching 128, which were observed not by two observers in the same class, but uh, by the same observer in a second class. We carried these observations in 24 departments of the country and 107 municipalities. Um, I'm going to say here that, as you can see, we had a, a large sample which was reduced uh, uh, both in schools, teachers, and operations. And this uh, talks about uh, a bit about the logistics of the application. Uh, uh, I would say that first, we, we it's important to have a very a good database of all the teachers, their contact numbers, their emails at the school, etc. Second, that this should be planned uh, in the moment that the school calendar is planned. Schools have a million things planned throughout the year, such as cultural week, parents' day, etc., etc., etc. And we should be able to put this application in in the school calendar because otherwise we're going to to crash in the schools. Uh, activities, but that's logistics. More important than that, there's a natural resistance from teachers to be observed and to be evaluated. So I would point out that it, it's important that teachers find use in the results of this evaluation. This means that we, we uh, I would say that it's important to, to give that step from a formative evaluation to a formative evaluation, and therefore teachers would profit a lot if they were able to, for example, be able to watch their own videos, uh, receive feedback from the observers, etc. Uh, getting getting uh, the teachers on the same boat is crucial uh, in order to not own, not only not to lose so much of uh, of the sample, but also in order to really be able to use this to improve the quality of teaching. So that would be all. I'm going to now give space to Julian to talk to a little bit about the results. Thank you very much. Okay. Good. Yeah. Very well. Thank you. Are you seeing the presentation in presentation mode? I, I think we're still see, we're still seeing mine. Yeah. Are you still seeing mine? No. No, your presentation is not in full screen, so you have to put it in full screen. Are, you, are the others seeing mine? The, 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 the slide of, that says five results. Yes, yes. that's what we're seeing. Yes. We, are, we are in that okay. slide, but it's not in full screen. It's not in full screen? No. But uh, now, no, you are in the next slide 5.1. Yes, but I, I put it here in, in full screen. Um, uh, do you want me to do it? Do you want me to share mine again? Idea. No, but we never saw yours, Adriana. Um, if you want, we can try with Jadira. So, Jadira, please try with your presentation. Or, or can you can you let me share? Stop sharing and share again once it yep. is in this mode. Ah, oh, but I cannot do it. You never saw my presentation. Um, we were using Jadira's presentation, but okay. everything at the end was. <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, okay, I know what to do. Um, uh, so I share the entire screen, share. Entire screen, share. And now I come here, here. Are okay, you seeing it well now? Yes. Yes. Good. yes. Okay. Well, so so I'm going to talk about uh, some of the results, as 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 anyone can imagine, um, from such an exercise with so many, so such a long time working on the design, then the the training, and then the application in so many schools, observing so many classes. Of course, we have we had tons of results out of of, of the whole exercise. But I will focus on, on, on two main results that are related to the quality of the whole process. And, and, and the first result I want to talk about is the discrimination among English classes. So try to answer the question, how fit were the two components to tell apart classes according to the characteristics? Uh, yes, so, so we want to know, okay, does this... Uh, um, exercise uh, or yes, in, in the end this instrument produce uh, results that can tell apart classes uh, according to their characteristics so so here I have some, some, some graphics presenting uh, some box plots so each of these graphics contains five box plots in different colors and each one represents the distribution of uh, measures obtained by the classes belonging to each one of these five groups that Adriana mentioned before. So we were observing classes from five, five intervention groups. And here I'm presenting the distribution of the scores of these five intervention groups in each of these four slides, four uh, graphics. So um, as, as, as you can see, um, yes, when, when, what we want to see when we're looking for discrimination is that uh, um, we hope that results are as spread or distribution are as spread as possible in, um, in uh, yes, this measured, the distributions of measures are as spread as possible both within um, groups, special groups you want to observe, as also uh, in, in comparison uh, between groups. Um, and, and this is, for example, the case in this first scale that is uh, uh, on the uh, left up in the, the, the high up part of, 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 of the uh, slide, which is about English use. And there you can see that, that you have teachers with all different levels of, yes, that, you can, you can, that we observed, very different levels of English use across classes. Um, this is also the case although not that as, as, as uh, strong with the communication and uh, of learning plan, um, which is the one on the right side, where we still see quite a lot of differences, uh, not only among between teachers, but also between the groups of teachers. Um, however, other, other scales, uh, as for example, norms and environment, the, the, the two that are on, on the lower part of the slide, norms and environment and feedback, had not such, well, at least norms and environment was completely um, um, concentrated in, in the higher level of, of the scale. Whereas for feedback, you see that there is quite a lot of spread among teachers because those bars go from the upper part of, of, of the graphic to the lower part, but most, uh, groups are very similar uh, uh, among them. So, so we, we're not telling really differences apart in, in big differences between the groups in feedback, uh, but we can tell some differences amongst uh, 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 classes, despite the fact that these are not as big different as big as the differences we see, for example, in English use. Um, when we see that. Um, we get that type of uniformity. Um, when and, and and if you work in measure, well, there, there are two two alternatives that you can uh, interpret those uniform. This is 
all the classes are similar. For example, from the resulting in norms and environment uh, left uh, uh, below, you could think that, that uh, yes, most classes are, are similar regarding norms and environment. However, if, if, if you look at this from, from a measurement perspective, what you would think is you are probably not looking at those things that make a difference. Yes, so, so there's something there that you would try to change in your instrument set so that you get a better discrimination by finding out what are the things that make different differences between, between classes and including them in the observation. Good. So that's what we got about discrimination. Now let's move to the second uh, type of result I want to talk about. And uh, it is um, reliability. And um, I, I want to, to, to add with two types of reliability. First, of class measures and then of teacher practices descriptors. Um, so let me try to explain what this is. Um, what we, yes, this is this is an analysis that we can do based on the additional samples, based on the additional samples that uh, we included in the application. If you remember when Adriana presented, she mentioned that we had, um, she mentioned that we had a group of teachers that were, or a group of classes that were observed uh, twice, or by, by two observers. Some classes were observed by two observers, and some teachers had two of their classes um, observed. So, so these these uh, the, the data we got from from these additional observations or these double observations in in these two senses. Uh, can help us answer the following questions. The first is if, if the the class measures that we that we produce can be trusted for decision processes. And uh, so yes, th this is a very important question. If 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 you're going to do this exercise of observation, of course you want to take decisions with those results, and and it is important to check that these measures are really reliable. Um, that's um, that's what has has to do with the observation of a class. However, um, yes, most decisions you will take will not do not concern a particular class, but they will concern a teacher. Yes, you will decide if a teacher needs some additional training, some help in some way, or if you should uh, congratulate him and, and and give him some some prize. For, for 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 his class his classes so so that's that's the it is very common to move from the class observation to extract conclusions about the teachers um, and there uh, there is the very important question is good but how how reliable is what I can observe in the classes uh, uh, yes how reliable or how valid it is to use what I observe in, 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 in the classes to extract conclusions about the teacher's practices. Um, in fact, this leads us to the question, how many class observations are needed to produce teacher measures that can be trusted as good descriptors of the teacher's practices? Yes, in, in this case, I want to think about what the, prof the, what the teacher does not of what happened in one specific class. Um, good. So to do so, we use measures of, 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 of the theory of generalizability, um, which I present here. These, these, the, the measures of, of reliability according to the theory of generalizability are like other reliability measures, for example, the, the, the alpha of Kronbach, um, are measure that tell you what part of the observed variation can be attributed to the object observed. So, so uh, um, yes, um, uh, 
yes. In fact, in fact, these 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 measures can be seen at percentages, and 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 so this point eighty one means that according to the data we collected, eighty one percent of the variation that is reported by a, a single observer in communication of the classical structure actually corresponds to what happened in the class. So there is a 19% that is noise. Uh, this may sound big. However, for, for, for these type of purposes, it is standard to uh, take as acceptable um, reliabilities that are above 0.7, that's above 70%. Um, and yes, above 80% are good reliabilities, in fact. So, um, and, and, and here, um, what, what, what I present in the table, the first column is for each of these scales that are, that are, that correspond to, to the, to the, to the um, lines in, in, in the table, um, uh, I present uh, this one observability reliability that is the measure of the reliability uh, of what I get when I use only one observer. And then in this next co co column, I have the reliability when I use two observers. As you can see, using two observers always improves reliability. The idea behind that is that when I have two observers, I, I will take as a measure the mean of what they report both and this will be closer to reality and so I, I i will always improve the reliability of my measures by having more observers um, in this case i present the, the in, in this table i present the five scales that we score the scales yes scales are um scores that are produced by compounding several observations. So we had several observations around the communication of the class structures. And by, by, by putting together these, these, these observations, we calculate a score in that scale. Um, this, this is really standard. And as you can see, the measures we produce are good for most of them. Um, yes, when we have two observers, we only have a problem with the measure of openness and flexibility. Whereas if we only have one observer, we still, we, we also, of course, have problem with openness and flexibility, but also with time and closing of activities. So, uh, um, th this information tells us that we should not use the scores we can produce with only one observer in those days of time and closing, closing of activities and openness and flexibility to take or to classify a given class, okay? These are not reliable measures. The other measures we produce are reliable. Be good. Then next is the issue of uh, the teacher measures, not the class measures. And, and here what we have is different descriptors for example, in, in the table on the left, you have the teacher communicates the plan for the class, the teacher assigns homework, the class development corresponds to the plan. These are, uh, uh, these are not truly uh, scores, but these are descriptors that we get from the observ observation. Um, these observations are, are, are good enough, these descriptors are good enough with one single observer. However, when I try, but this is a descriptor of what happened in one single class. When I try to tell something about the teacher, I have to look at what 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 do I gain by having more observations or by looking at more classes. And there you can see that the reliability of using two observations, so so observing two classes of the same teacher, are low. We do not get good enough reliability for these descriptors. So two observations are not good enough to tell me something about the practices of a teacher. And this is because these things can vary 
pretty much or yes more than uh, it would be satisfactory no more than that it would be needed for having good measures from one class to the other these are so in in, in this so in the left i have some of, uh, descriptors from the domain of planning and preparation in the table on the left there are some descriptors from monitoring and evaluation here again the two observations reliability is low um, this is not always the case in this next slide i have a, a couple of examples where the two observations reliability is good enough so for instance in practices of routine and routines for group management are well established that is something that you can measure reliably using two class observations uh, and this is from from the domain of, of learning environment from the domain of teaching and learning and dynamics you have things um, yes you have here four examples of things that two observations already provide a reliable description of the teacher's practices so so uh, for instance what we have here is the teacher is, is whether the teacher promotes English use during the class, whether the teacher uses mainly English to communicate, whether the grammatical structures are presented in a communicative context, and finally, whether the teacher's English level is sufficient for class purposes. So these are things that I are, yes, that, that you can uh, um, report of a teacher by observing at two classes according to the data we got in in in, in the exercise um so that that would be it i would move to some conclusions um the first thing i i, I would like to to um, yes to, to yes. say is that standardized class observation as we have seen here is a quite powerful diagnostic tool um however it has some uh, problems that one has to address First is the, 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 the issue that Adriana mentioned, that getting teachers to accept being observed in class is a great challenge. And, 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 and she also mentioned the importance of making class, obser class observations useful for teachers. So sort of using it as formative evaluation and not only useful for the evaluator, which is the case when you have a summative evaluation. Um, next. Um, yes, I'm sorry, Julian. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, time it's over, so um, I mean, okay. good. Yes, uh, let me go through the, the, the conclusion. It's, it's this is the last slide. So, okay, the next is that class messages can be unreliable when you use one single observer, and this may be due to problems in the instrument design or in the observer's training. Next, instrument design must involve piloting and adjustment processes to be a good instrument design. Uh, and the training requires time, human resources, and video material. Finally, um, it is important, very important to bear in mind that only few teacher practices descriptors can be obtained out of two class observations. Uh, almost never out of only one class observation. And most teacher practices descriptors need more than two, at least three, class observations so to to be valid to take uh to yes to make decisions that would be it. thank you thank you julian um we don't have time and to questions anyway we were answering some questions on comments and uh, you can if you want to know further information about this topic you can co contact them to the uh, emails who i wrote which are Centro de Evaluación, um, arroba uniandes .edu .com, and amolina arroba colegio de San Patricio um, doc edu .com. So uh, thank you very much to Julian, Adriana, and Yadira. Um, if you want, you can stay uh, writing uh, or answering some questions in commentaries or comments. It depends how sure. it appears to you. Thank um, you very much. Um,